shared summer, summer worship, shared by St. Mark's, St. Peter's, and St. Andrew's United Church in downtown Sudbury. This worship also comes at the end of Sudbury Pride Week, during unusual times. If you are joining us for the first time, a special welcome to you. Welcome also to our regular community who gather to pray, to hear stories of inspiration and hope, and to be reminded that though we are keeping physically distanced, God's love binds us together. Today we are privileged to have Richard Rainville with us today to offer something from his journey. Next week, St. Peter's will lead the first of three shared Sunday worship services, and we will post on Facebook the link to those services on the St. Peter's United Church YouTube channel. Would you like to join us for online fellowship time at 11.30 on Sunday mornings? To get your Zoom link that you click on to join us, please contact Reverend Catherine Somerville. Her contact information is published in our weekly newsletter on Thursdays, and her coordinates are also posted on our Facebook page. Now, let us prepare for worship together. Long before settlers came to this land that we call Canada, there were people living on this land, and they cared for it, and we call them the First Nations. We here at St. Andrew's United Church, we worship on the traditional territories of the Wanapate First Nation and the Atikamek Shing and Anishinaabek. We recognize the long history of our First Nations and Métis peoples of Ontario. We give thanks for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Let us all, treaty people, commit ourselves anew to justice and reconciliation. Once there is light, there, there are, are no longer deep shadows. shadows. Once there is hope, there, there is, is no longer deep despair. Once there is justice, there, there can, can no longer be complete, complete oppression. oppression. Once there is peace grounded in justice, there, there cannot be war. war. Once there is affirmation, there, there can, can no longer be utter condemnation. condemnation. Once there is acceptance, there, there can cannot be unhindered discrimination. Once there is celebration, God's kingdom vision for our world might be realized. May it be so and be forever. All of you who delight in sacred moments, both strange and ordinary, come and worship our God, the one who has created all people in diversity and beauty. Thanks be to God, who blesses the peculiar and rejoices in the uniqueness of every body and being. People take on flesh in every gender and sexual orientation, every race and ability, every body size and body type. Each embodied difference is a unique glimpse of holy wonder. Blessed are those who search for God among the lives of the oppressed, the betrayed, the turned away and the condemned. Blessed are those who receive with joy the gifts of God enfleshed among us. Let us pray. God, when you called each of us into being, you delighted in your works. You gifted us with differences that illuminate the breadth of beauty, wisdom, and practices of love in your creation. In whatever ways we still struggle, to accept and celebrate our own unique offerings, free us from narrow thinking that confines, constrains, or condemns your good work in us. We also pray now the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Psalm 139, a song of faith that might speak to those of us who particularly feel life's trials and tribulations weighing on us. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. 
You have known when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light as light is as light to you. Second reading is from Genesis 28, verses 10 to 19. The reading that will focus on our message today comes from the Hebrew Bible story of Jacob. He has swindled and survived all his life, but in this passage he finds out that he is not alone. This dream marks the beginning of a journey of self-discovery and peace for him. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and camped for the night since the sun had set. He took one of the stones there, set it under his head, and lay down to sleep. And he dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground and it reached all the way to the sky. Angels of God were going up and going down on it. Then God was right before him, saying, I am God, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. I'm giving the ground on which you are sleeping to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. They'll stretch from west to east and from north to south. All the families of the earth will bless themselves in you and your descendants. Yes, I'll stay with you. I'll protect you wherever you go, and I'll bring you back to this very ground. I'll stick with you until I've done everything I promised you. Jacob woke up from his sleep. He said, God is in this place, truly, and I didn't know it. He was terrified. He whispered in awe, incredible, wonderful, holy. This is God's house. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob was up first thing in the morning. He took the stone that he'd used for his pillow and stood it up as a memorial pillar and poured oil over it. He christened the place Bethel, or God's house. Let us pray. God of mystery, you speak to us in stories and metaphors. It could be easy to shrug them off as just a story, but at the heart of them are messages for living courageously faithfully, and often in countercultural ways. Give us clarity as we ponder these scriptures, baffling and wonderful. Give us the heart to feel, the mind to reflect, and the will to act with integrity. Amen.
Jacob was a schemer. He was a swindler of his own brother, and the actions of Jacob polarized his family. His life was a struggle, and it's no surprise that towards the later part of his life, he was given the name Israel, which actually means one who wrestles with God. So he has this mysterious dream of a stairway running from heaven to earth. God in the dream is high and majestic, but it's interesting. A Bible scholar makes uh, an observation that where God is in proximity to Jacob, the translation that we had today actually is different from many Bible translations. It says that God is with him, beside him. As Jacob lies on the ground, promising, God promises to him that I will be with you and I will keep you wherever you go. We've known for a long time that dreams come to us and they're important. They help us to see things from a different perspective, perhaps seeing the world in its beauty and yes, even in its ugliness, seeing it more clearly. Visionary Archbishop Desmond Tutu wonders about God's dream in his book, appropriately entitled, God Has a Dream. I have a dream, God says. Please help me to realize it. It is a dream of a world whose ugliness and squalor and poverty, its war and hostility, its greed and harsh competitiveness, its alienation and disharmony are changed into their glorious counterparts when there will be laughter, joy, and peace, where there will be justice and goodness and compassion and love and caring and sharing. In God's family, there are no outsiders. All are insiders, according to Tutu. Black and white, rich and poor, gay and straight, Jew and Arab, Palestinian and Israeli. After a lifetime of scheming, Jacob's patterns of thinking and acting are impacted by this dream that God has given him. His swindling gives way to reconciliation with his brother Esau. Jacob's transformation story is a vision, I think, a vision of hope for our church. Catherine and I asked Richard Rainville from Rezo Access Network in Sudbury if he would dare to dream with us for a bit. Even as he and Rezo staff walk with people who are facing challenges we cannot imagine. Richard, I wonder if you would share with us a vision of transformation. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Richard Rainville. For over 31 years, I've been employed by Rezo Access Network, and for the last 21 years, I've been the executive director, working with a very dedicated team. Together, we provide services to and work with individuals who are most often marginalized. People who are poorly housed, if at all, people struggling with issues of mental health, people who use substances and or inject drugs, people who work within the sex trade, people who are part of the two-spirited, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, queer, and questioning communities, people who struggle with gender identity or sexual orientation. We work with people. When I'm not working, I share a home with my loving husband, Robert, and our two fur kids, soft-coated Wheaton Terriers, Miss Olivia and Miss Scarlett. We share our life and a good fortune with close friends and family, as well as our church community at St. Peter's United. I will be 62 this coming fall. I often reflect on my personal journey and recognize that in some ways I had it easier than most gay people from my childhood era. I was able to come out at the early age of 18 and still be supported by my immediate family. Living the secret, would still be necessary to protect myself from unwanted comments, personal and physical attacks, loss of employment, loss of friendship, and other issues which heterosexuals need not concern themselves with. 
If you indulge me for a few minutes, I'd like to try a short meditation, one that might give you insight as to what many from the 2S LGBTQ communities experience. Imagine, if you will, yourself as a child, growing up in a loving family with two parents and a number of siblings. Your parents, however, are of the same gender. In this meditation, this is the norm. All of our friends and families have similar household to yours. You, your sibling and friends are at the age when you are discovering your sexualities. Your siblings and friends make comments about same gender individuals they see on TV, in classrooms or on the streets. You try to connect in that way, but you have feelings for individuals of the opposite gender. You're not sure what to do with these feelings, and you fear you have no one to talk to about them. You are all alone. You hear negative comments from friends and family members making fun of people who seem to like others from the opposite gender. You don't want to be called those names, so you keep your feelings a secret. When pressed, you pretend to like someone of the same gender, but it isn't real. You don't really have feelings for them in that way. As you get older, you meet someone who identifies as having the same secret. They too have strong emotional and romantic feelings for someone of the opposite gender, and in fact, they have feelings for you, as you do for them. At last, you're not alone, and all of those feelings that make you think you were going crazy fade away. While you and they start secretly seeing each other, you realize in order for this relationship to be realized, the secret must be maintained. No one should ever find out about it for fear they might harm your relationship, so you continue to see each other in secret. One day while at work, a colleague says, Hey, aren't you a friend of so-and-so? I hear they were in an accident, badly hurt, and taken to the hospital by ambulance. You're in shock. You question what to do. You know the hospital will only let you see your beloved if you disclose your relationship. But what will that do to the level of care they might receive? Will they be discriminated against in one form or another? And what about your job if work finds out? And your friends and family, what will they think? I remember using a longer version of this meditation in the late 80s, early 90s. You'd think this wouldn't be an issue any longer, but for many it still is. I recently saw a quote on Facebook that seems relevant here. Queer people don't grow up as ourselves. We grow up playing a version of ourselves that sacrifices authenticity to minimize humiliation and prejudice. The massive task of our adult lives is to unpick which parts of ourselves are truly us and which parts we've created to protect us. When St. Peter's uh, Church made the decision to examine whether to become an affirming congregation, it was met with skepticism. Why do we need to become an affirming congregation when we are already welcoming to all, some folks asked. Welcoming, yes. However, having a heterosexist view doesn't recognize the privilege this view entails. It doesn't acknowledge the struggles many of us have experienced and continue to experience as, as members of the 2S LGBTQ plus communities. As members of church, if the goal is to be as welcoming as we can be, a better understanding of experiences, struggles, and milestones need to be heard. You may never understand completely, but your helping voices amplifying ours is what's needed as allies. Thank you and happy pride. Thank you, Richard, for truly making us think. Archbishop Tutu says that God is continually inviting us, God's children, to be partners in actualizing God's very radical dream for our community and for our world. God is transforming our churches, whether we see it or not. God is beside us beside all the courageous children, <clears throat> teens, adults, 
who yearn to be accepted for who they are. Christ's church is the very place to speak boldly about God's inclusive dream that involves all people. Spirit of Pride celebrates the beauty of every person, including those who are two-spirited, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, questioning, and all of us who are allies too. All are children of God. All of us gather together a spectrum of color that come together as one rainbow. Like Jacob, we in the church are undergoing a profound transformation. May we pay attention to the dreams that we are given. They are holy and they are important invitations into God's dream. May it be so. Amen. Please join with me. Let us gather in holy peace. Peace that is the preparation for justice. Imaginative spirit who stirs within us passions and compassions. Remind us that it is you who have formed us. Great rainbow of creation, we seek your justice. It is, it is our responsibility, responsibility to end hate, intolerance, discrimination, and violence. May we hear with healed ears and hearts that all of us are beautiful and unique beings formed in the womb of the universe, blessed by our diversity and affirmed by holy authority. We remember those who have suffered violence. We remember our responsibility to name violence. We remember that all are called to end violence. We remember that all are called to justice and peace. We pledge to one another that we will let the light of the divine burn brightly in each of us. We pledge that we will accept our power as children of divine love. We pledge to share with all of creation the gift that is each one of us. We pledge to embrace the mystery wrapped up in our identity, our sexuality, and in the wonder you planted in each of us. Rainbow Camp would be to safe space for the kids, to educate them, and to make them feel a part of something. You know, these are our young people who've gone through hell and back 51 weeks out of the year. 
because so many of our kids are coming to us from broken homes, uh, are lonely, are isolated, whether in the city or rural areas. These kids are feeling alone, and the one thing that we can give them, even if it's only for five days, is a sense of community. It makes me wish that I was still young enough to be here in 2012 when the camp opened. If you're under the LGBTQ2 plus umbrella, um, then you're gonna meet people that you can relate to and talk to and support you. And if even if you're not, you're gonna meet people that are gonna have so many stories to help you come out as a more educated and just more well-rounded person. The more society grows, hopefully the less we will need Rainbow Camp. You're coming out with support group no matter who you are. It's incredible. It's giving LGBTQ2 plus kids an opportunity to experience camp and to feel safe and to feel comfortable and to enjoy one of those things that many kids get to enjoy without being worried about judgment or being mistreated or bullied because of who they are. Since its beginning, the church was meant to be a place of chosen family, a community of outcasts and outlaws, dreamers, prophets, and humble disciples of love. In the company of divine presence, we create belonging. We nurture justice. With grateful hearts, I invite you to join us, all of you, to share your gifts and our gifts, whether it's our time, our passion shared, or it might be our monetary treasures given to an important cause, I encourage you to connect with your sense of thankfulness and give generously. Make a difference. St. Mark's, St. Peter's, and St. Andrew's are all a part of these summer worship services. I would invite you to find us online. Our websites and our Facebook pages will have information about how you can contribute towards the important work of the church that you want to support. So let's make a difference for justice and love in this world together. If you are considering contributing, maybe it is your time or your treasure to the work of one of the churches, we encourage you to find the contact information for St. Mark's, St. Peter's, or St. Andrew's uh, United Churches among the credits at the very end of this video worship. Will you pray with me? God, who loves all your children, we thank you for your, your diversity of messengers from Jacob and Esau to Mary and Miriam in our Bible tradition, but also our modern day messengers of courageous truth and love from prophets within the church and outside your church who helped us to understand that Christ is enfleshed in a wide variety of gender experiences. In gratitude, we offer you a heartfelt thank you for all the gifts you have shared in love, God. May we share them with our world. Amen. and minds together in prayer. Would you pray with me? On this new day, a day of your making, we give you thanks and praise God for all of the ways that your spirit is inviting us to share good news. We hear your spirit sounding as music in the streets, 
as conversation between neighbors who have the chance to catch up and visit after so much time apart. We hear your spirit in laughter, which is inviting us to smile and rejoice in your blessing. We see your spirit in quiet ways, serving ways, caring ways, in love that knows no bounds. We feel your spirit, inviting us to take a deep breath, breathing in the newness of living that you are dreaming for all of your people. We thank you that light is shining in darkened places, especially now, for those on the margins, for those who have had to hide their sexuality and deny their personhood. We thank you that hope and new vision continue to grow in the world. We thank you for a call today to take on this life with courage, to speak up when we see wrong, to stand beside as allies and friends in the cause of justice for all people. But some of us are still trembling, still forced to keep silence. Some of us feel threatened, or we believe that ours is the only way and that we must threaten. Renew your dream of justice and peace for all people and between all people. Give us the strength and the courage we need to look deep within. May we take this quiet moment and examine ourselves searching for the ways that we have not been loving, the times we have not spoken of. We pray that you will give our best intentions voice, that we will speak out in the name of love on behalf of all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And now we pause and we remember those who are scared, those who are alone, those who have received bad news this week, those of us who are feeling impatient with the ways we have to live now. God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. And now love, fill us with courage. And now Christ, send us out into this new day carrying a message of hope. And now, Spirit, give us gentleness and a dream to follow. We offer these prayers in the name of the one who is our way, the one who is our life. Amen. say thank you to everyone who's been involved in these online worship experiences over the last few months. I particularly on this Spirit of Pride service want to thank Adrienne DeVoe 
and I want to thank Richard Rainville for joining us from the St. Peter's community to make this truly a collective effort. So again, happy pride to everyone. Let us bring our worship to a close as we say responsibly the blessing on screen. Let us go from here to proclaim the good news that, that God, God takes on flesh in the strange and surprising. Love liberates from the margins. Together we have what we need to resist evil and oppression. With a renewed commitment to solidarity with all of God's beloved children, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, questioning intersex, ally, and asexual, and two-spirited people. May the Spirit lead us from this place with peace. Even as we are still caring for one another by remaining physically distanced from one another, we affirm our collective faith that God's Spirit binds us together. Will you, again, one more time say with me the blessing that was created by our moderator, Richard Bott. Creator God, help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. Amen.